Hello, this is Scott, and this lecture in the Transgender Health series covers surgical transitioning. The indications for surgical transitioning uh, for ones that do not affect fertility are one referral from a mental health professional that specializes in transgender care, ensuring persistent, well-documented gender dysphoria, capacity, being age of majority, and if there are any medical or mental health concerns, they must be well-controlled. For male to female patients, it's also recommended that there are 12 months of hormone therapy prior to breast augmentation to maximize breast growth and obtain better surgical results. For surgery that affects fertility, it's pretty similar to the surgeries that do not affect fertility, but requires two referrals from mental health professionals. As talked about in previous lectures, uh, the mental health professional referral is often a huge barrier to care for these patients, as many insurance companies uh, require their own in-house therapists to confirm um, this criteria is met and uh, they don't have the same rapport with the patients. Uh, WPATH recommends for informed consent that the surgical techniques available refer referral to colleagues for alternative options are um, given to the patients. Advantages and disadvantages of each technique, um, limitations of a procedure to ideal, achieve ideal results uh, before and after photographs, um, it also must be told that inherent risk and complications with rates of complications of the various techniques. Uh, Non-genital surgeries include breast and chest surgery, facial feminization surgery, liposuction and lipofilling, voice surgery, however this is fairly complicated surgery and not generally done, um, thyroid cart cartilage reduction, gluteal augmentation, hair reconstruction, and various other aesthetic procedures. Um, many insurance companies will not provide coverage for these procedures as they're seen as cosmetic. For surgeries that affect fertility for male to female, there's penectomy, orchiectomy, vaginoplasty, clitoroplasty, and vulvoplasty. Um, many of these surgeries are covered by insurance um, due to them being seen as necessary to treat gender dysphoria. Uh, the created orifices are actually fairly functional, um, with the neoclitoris formed from the glands of the penis, able to uh, retain the ability to orgasm. 55% um, of post-surgical patients actually had more intense orgasms, while 20% felt no difference. Um, three quarters were happy with the neoclitoral sensitivity, and 67% were satisfied with neovaginal depth, while overall satisfaction with the surgery being associated more with neoclitoral sensitivity. These are the two main um, main ways in order to achieve um, vaginoplasty. Uh, the way on the left is the penile inversion procedure in which the tissue from the scrotum and the penis is used to create the neovagina. Uh, the procedure on the right is using part of the um, colon in order to create a bowel flap to create the neovagina. Uh, the neovagina created from the bowel flap is falling out of favor due to um, mucus discharge and uh, poor outcomes and um, smells associated with use of rectal tissue. Uh, a new procedure that has recently been developed is using a peritoneal flap in order to create the neovagina. This is um, advantages over the penile inversion surgery and the fact that there doesn't need to be any hair removal um, and it's partially self-lubricating due to the fluid produced by the peritoneum. Uh, complications associated with the formation of neovaginas um, is number one venous thromboembolism. Um, there's a prolonged lithotomy position during the surgery which is associated with VTE and there's theoretical risk from estrogen hormones, um, but it's been unconfirmed by clinical trials. Uh, perioperative risk reduction has not been outlined. Estrogen is generally stopped. However, in studies of patients on hormone uh, replacement therapy for cisgender women, it's actually found that either stopping or starting hormones in the immediate perioperative period is associated with increased VTE risk. So the actual uh, VTE risk and how it is related to estrogen therapy is relatively unknown, and uh, patients should be counseled on this. Uh, the skin used in vaginoplasty um, 
contains hair and can be a nidus for infection in the neovagina. Hair removal is a must before creation of the neovagina, and patients should be counseled on the risk of infection. Uh, up to 85% of patients require additional skin grafts. Um, some have rectal injury. Um, some have rectal neovaginal fistula. Um, there are rates of urethral injury um, and urethro neovaginal fistula. Um, up to a quarter of patients have minor necrosis, with uh, less than 1% having major necrosis requiring reoperation. Uh, there's also a risk of stenosis of the neovagina. However, this is mostly associated with patients stopping dilation post procedure. Uh, for female to male patients, the non genital surgeries include breast or chest surgery, um, voice surgery, although this is not usually done as it masculinizes with testosterone. And as talked before, voice surgery has high rates of complication and is not usually done in general. Uh, there's also liposuction and lipofilling, uh, pectoral implants, and various other aesthetic procedures. The only uh, one of these surgeries covered by insurance generally is uh, mastectomy. Surgeries that affect fertility are hysterectomy and salpingoepirectomy, urethral reconstruction, uh, metoidioplasty or phalloplasty, vaginectomy, scrotoplasty, and um, erectile and testicular prosthesis implantation. Phalloplasty is the creation of a neophallus from extragenital tissue um, and able to insert a penile prosthesis. Uh, penetration during in the during sexual intercourse is allowed with phalloplasty, um, along with voiding in the standing position. Uh, the most common form of this is the radial free forearm flap, where um, a portion of the tissue from the forearm is taken, um, and then also has urethral reconstruction to make sort of a tube within a tube in order to create the neophallus. Um, these are the different forms of free flap um, formation of a neophallus. Metoidioplasty is a variation on the neophallus uh, creation of a neopenis using the hormonally enlarged clitoris. Um, this achieves an aesthetically acceptable neophallus, which allows for voiding while standing and uh, preserves erogenous sensation from the clitoris. Um, joining of the labia majora along with testicular implantations creates the scrotum. This has advantage over phalloplasty in that it's a one-stage procedure uh, and with preservation of erogenous sensation. However, the small neophallus is usually um, too small to be used in sexual intercourse. In general, bottom surgery is not often done for uh, transgender males as it has high rates of complications. Uh, phalloplasty has vascular insults and partial phallic loss. Um, along with high rates of infection, hematoma, wound dehiscence, fistula formation, um, diverticular formation, and retained vaginal mucosa and formation of a mucosal. Metoidioplasty has lower rates of complication, um, but has many of the same complications, including hematoma infection, partial necrosis, urinary infections, voiding problems, uh, fistula formation, and stricture formation. Patients should be very counseled on the um, limitations of the phalloplasty and metoidioplasty surgeries and the high rate of complication before proceeding with these um, gender-affirming gender surgeries. UVA does not currently have the expertise to do bottom surgery. Uh, we currently only offer orthiectomy and hysterectomy and top surgery. Um, Johns Hopkins is the closest academic center providing bottom surgery. NYU is a major uh, powerhouse in bottom surgery and is one of the only centers in the United States that accepts Medicaid for bottom surgery. Vanderbilt provides facial feminization and top surgery uh, and has recently started doing penile inversion vi vaginoplasties with plans to implement metoidioplasty and phalloplasty. Uh, they do not do peritoneal um, penile inversions uh, because they don't have the expertise as a plastic surgeon can do the penile inversion vaginoplasty, but in order to invade the peritoneum, it requires the um, cooperation of a urologist. Um, University of Maryland does some surgeries, as does Mount Sinai. Uh, there are some private practices providing bottom surgery, but many only accept cash payment, which is a barrier to care, um, as they don't accept insurance. Um, most academic centers have a two plus year waiting list. And so in order for many of the patients to get bottom surgery, it takes years of waiting. 
the outcomes for gender affirming surgery are very good, especially amongst uh, those undergoing male to female gender affirming surgery, uh, with most patients being very satisfied or satisfied with the procedure. This graph shows rates of anxiety and depression, uh, as, long, as well as uh, hospitalization after suicide attempts uh, perioperatively and then several years after um, gender affirming surgery. Uh, in the past, this data has actually been used as an argument against gender affirming surgery as the long term rates of uh, mood and anxiety disorders were compared against the general population was found to be double. However, if, however, if you match it against um, transgender controls who have not undergone gender affirming surgery, their rates of anxiety and depression are cut in half and the absolute risk reduction for attempted suicide uh, with hospitalization drops uh, about 3%. This means that uh, gender affirming surgery is a very effective procedure in decreasing gender dysphoria and treating um, comorbid uh, anxiety and depression.